Have you ever heard of a guy named Peacemaker? No. Peacemaker is the hidden bad guy in Suicide Squad. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. And he was also the character we got the least information about, unlike, you know, Idris Elba's character or Daniela Melchior's character, Ratcatcher 2 or Polka Dot Man. We we got to know their backgrounds, where they were from, how they came to be, who they are. And they all had changes in the film. They all became better people. And uh, and so for me, um, taking Peacemaker and allowing him to live in Suicide Squad and and telling his story uh, is what the series is all about. Peacemaker is the character who loves peace so much, he will have it at any cost. And um, he believes that the means justifies the end. We find Peacemaker in episode one of Peacemaker with his life turned upside down. He thought his journey might be over, it is not. Uh, he is in a, a very different position than we're used to seeing Peacemaker. I certainly think the uh, catalyst for all of that stuff trying to uh, finally breaking apart is the confrontation with Rick Flagg. All of what Peacemaker does is for what he believes is a virtuous cause. And then he comes face to face with someone he admires and someone whose uh, ethos he tries to model himself after. And uh, they have a fight to the death and he wins. Peacemaker, what a joke. And the good news is he gets out with his life. And the bad news is now his whole life itself is thrown into question. So I think it all starts with that confrontation with Rick Flagg and that's you know, it was a it was a shaky house of cards to begin with, and and somebody just flicked the whole thing over, and and now we find uh, Christopher Smith as peacemaker trying to rebuild if he can. Hey, Dad. It's been kind of a rough go for me lately, Dad. You don't say. Somebody shot me, and the building fell on me. You let somebody shoot you? It's not the guy invited him to come shoot me, Dad. Pathetic. Bobby Smith is <clears throat> a horrible, horrible human being uh, that happens to be an engineering genius. He creates these helmets for his son. We had to create uh, such a horrible human being to explain why Peacemaker's such a horrible person. We both kind of laughed thinking about it being Archie Bunker on steroids. It was just a hoot to pull off. You're comparing yourself to a chode. Not in a bad way. This is Harcourt. We are handling the field. Amelia Harcourt is a Black Ops agent. She's been working in this field since she was a kid, basically. She believes that she would just be better off alone. She would do a better job alone. She doesn't like Peacemaker. She thinks he's a traitor. She just thinks he's, he sucks. Why are you in your costume? <laughs> costume. This is a uniform and it's brand new. So I gotta stretch it out, make it more comfortable before we go on a mission. Maybe I'm stupid, but why would you even want to wear that on a mission? A bright red shirt and white pants aren't exactly conducive to lurking in the shadows. John is a computer tech uh, headquarters guy, and I feel like at the end of the Suicide Squad, he was probably relieved, A, that, you know, he thought Peacemaker was done with, and that was just some one less asshole he had to deal with. And then you see the end credit sequence uh, at the end of Suicide Squad, which was the first thing I shot on Peacemaker. He's a guy who's now super bummed that he has to work with a, this douchebag who's now come back and is uh, really riding him and making him the, the butt of all his jokes. What? The children's books? It's Berenstain Bears, not Berenstain Bears. <laughs> Dude, I grew up on those books. It's Berenstain Bears. Mm, absolutely not. It's actually named after the creator, Stan and Jan Berenstain. Does this fucking matter? No, sure. I play Leota Adebayo, who is very green at her job. She is a, um, used to be veterinarian, now turned badass <laughs> overnight, and is trying to navigate this new world that she's been thrown into uh, with Peacemaker and this group of misfits. I'm giving you the chance to stay out of prison and work for me. Kill people. Bad people. Clemson Moon is a former Black Ops operative who's been put in charge of this ragtag group of world savers. And uh, he <laughs> seems to be reluctantly in charge of the Apple Dumpling Gang, as he calls them. And we find him at the beginning of the series as a very mysterious guy who everyone knows his name, trying to bring some kind of, of order to the chaos that is this squad of vigilantes, really.
Who's the guy that's peeking out behind the trash can? Vigilante is trying to be helpful. <laughs> vigilante is a vigilante who is Adrian Chase, uh, who is a busboy, and he fancies himself as the best friend of Peacemaker, whether Peacemaker believes that or not. What separates us from other killers is we only kill bad people. Usually. I thought you loved peace, no matter how many men, women, and children you needed to kill to get it. When you start with that mantra, you're starting with a deeply flawed comic book character, right? <laughs> if, his, if his mantra is, I, I want peace, it, it, it's very ironic. And so you're automatically, your baseline is you're starting off with some complexity. And you're starting off with a guy who doesn't fit the mold of what your traditional hero uh, is supposed to be in these stories. When we go home with them at the very beginning, he's not Bruce Wayne who lives in like a mansion. He lives in like a trailer park. And I think part of the fun of this show is is exploring that character's morality and all of our moralities in a way that maybe feels a little bit left of center and a little bit more non-traditional. Well, I think a, the, the series is really an exploration of that mantra. And we, we realized that he was using it almost as a, uh, uh, a crutch or a security blanket to give meaning to what he had, to the choices he'd made in life. And I think over the course of the series, we, we begin to understand his evolution, you know, from that, you know, toxic masculinity that he displays in the Suicide Squad to really understanding what a man is by the end of episode 108, just kind of the definition of what is masculinity. So that, that, that phrase that he uses is really an important part of who he is as he tries to give meaning to, you know, some of the really terrible choices he's made in his life. He killed somebody who he really admired and looked up to. Because of that, I think he's starting to go, wait a second, what are these ideals that I'm carrying around with me? What is this sort of unifocus that I have on creating peace through violence? Um, how does that really affect me? And I think he's starting to see where his ideals are really oppressing his soul and his spirit is being destroyed uh, because he's living under the umbrella of these, um, these ideals that aren't really healthy for him to have.